For you, as you're looking at your, your perfect person, 1 million to 3 million, as you're figuring, as you are understanding who you're talking to and narrowing it down and niching down, what if, if we can talk about the psychographic of that human being, of that real estate leader who is making a gross commission of one to three million, running a team, trying to get out of some of the more busy day to day so they can leverage other people's time? Mm -hmm. What are they worried about? What are they going through? What keeps them up at night? Uh, what stresses them out? What are what are the psychographics? What are the those things that they're feeling as they um, let's call out that avatar and really try to understand like what's behind what motivates and drives them? Yeah, uh, I want to I want to answer that in just a second. I, I, I will say this. Uh, my coaching company, we we put out a whole bunch of content, and this podcast is one of those extensions of it. We lost our avatar for a while because we saw that we were catering to the top 1% of realtors in the country. And as we catered to that, it was great. And we said, well, there's still 99% of realtors that we aren't catering to. So let's water down our message. Let's try to speak to everyone. And we immediately lost ourselves and we lost the North Star of our company. So we spent way more time and energy chasing after people that were harder to convert. We thought it would be easier because we thought we had clout and credibility. It was harder to convert those people. And they churned and burned so much faster uh, because we, we were diluting it. So in that... We now, I'm going I'm to go to your original question, Adam. We found that as we're giving this voice out, there are two major pains that every real estate agent and real estate team leader is dealing with. When we mm -hmm. speak to the team leader, we catch those that are aspirational and that wants to have that next chapter in their life. And so we actually cater to the 99% when we just speak to the 1%. But if we speak to the 99%, we miss the 1% and the 1% pays more than the 99 does uh, all day, every day. Uh, but the, the two pains that they're dealing with is uh, in this industry, you're screwed if you're successful and you're screwed if you're not. You're why, are, why, why is it bad to be successful? In if you're successful, you lose all your time. At least your first iteration of success. And that's where most people are in this messy middle is they have given their unintentional soul to this business. And it has become such a lifestyle that they turn around and they said, I was doing this for my family and I don't see my family anymore. There's a heavy irony in this business. Uh, and I'm sure there is in, in every other business, right? As, as an entrepreneur, you pour into something and then you immediately look to say, well, this is not what I intended it to be. So you're screwed if you're not, of course, because you don't have any time or money. If you are successful, you lose uh, you lose your time. And so most people are dealing with the pains of uh, they don't have enough time and they don't have enough money. And the heart of it is we can label things. And, and, and I learned from you even in our, our brief conversation that the labeling of things matters a lot. And if you talk about leadership, I'm not sure people get all excited about it. If you talk about money and time, it seems like people are like, well, that's the problem that I'm facing with. And when you recognize as you appeal the layers of the onion back, they actually have leadership problems. And that's why they're dealing with complications of money and time. They don't know how to lead themselves. They're bad at leading a business and it simply compounds. But the, the label of it, of saying, hey, you need to be a better leader, doesn't draw near in as much to say, would you like to make more money in less time? 